Marcus Conti reporting. European powers warn Venezuela President Maduro. He must call elections within eight days or they will officially recognize the opposition's claim of leadership. Pow. <laughs> so um, U.S. is... Uh, is strong arming Venezuela. Uh, a little bit of a hostile takeover, if you will. You know what a hostile takeover is? That's when oligarchs take a small company and try to sink it. Not because it's a bad company, it's because they want to own that company. And they were treating the United States and uh, China and um, Russia are treating Venezuela as if it's a piece of property, an, an acquisition. All right, so. So the UN, um, I'm going to read some stuff from uh, BBC. European powers warn Venezuelan president. I just read that. Maduro is under pressure after his rival Juan Guardo declared himself acting president on Wednesday. It's a lot of reiteration, but it's good to hear again. This is a can we have to kick down the road because it. the, the bottom line is it uh, points the finger at election fraud, election rigging, right? That's the accusation. The only accusation the United States government really has, besides the poverty that uh, Venezuela is experiencing, is the fact that Pompeo and Trump and Pence and, and uh, Bolton, Mustache, are, the walrus, are, all, are all suggesting that Venezuela rigged the election in favor of Maduro. But there's no, there's no proof of that. There's no evidence of that. But there's plenty of proof that, that the Democrats rigged the election against Bernie Sanders when Hillary Clinton ran against him. Remember that? See, we're not going to forget that. We're not going to forget that the United States has blatant election fraud all the time, right? 2,000 po voters purged off the ro rolls here in Brooklyn. You remember that? We're not going to forget. We're not going to forget. You saw how, how Bernie Sanders folded like a, like a, like a cheap chair and uh, refused to call out the election fraud against him. Polling places closed. Uh, so much, so much, so much evidence on the table. Right? Laundering money through the Clinton Foundation, laundering money through the DNC to, to, to smash down ballot uh, contestants. Right? Election fraud, rampant in the United States. But here's, here's the United States saying that Venezuela is... Engaging in, in uh, election fraud. Venezuela rejected the ultimatum at the UN meeting. Their foreign minister told members of the United States, the UN Security Council in New York, that Mr. Maduro's presidency was legitimate and the country would not be pressured into calling elections. Nobody is going to give us deadlines or tell us if there, are, if there are elections or not. That's their right to do, right? It's their country. They're holding their ground. Imagine if they, someone came here and said, "Okay, Trump, you got to go. Uh, we, we don't we don't like the elections. Uh, sorry, right? wouldn't happen." Maduro was sworn in for a second term early this month after an election marred by an opposition boycott and allegations of voter rigging, leading to a large anti-Maduro protest. Well, there is no protest. This is the BBC reporting. There's very little. There's a, there's equal protest on both sides. He accused uh, he accused Maduro, the head of the National Assembly, of mounting a coup. That's Maduro saying. Well, it is a coup. There's no other way. It's an unelected, uh, uh, unofficiated uh, individual stepping up saying I'm the president. It's a coup backed by U.S. U.S. might. On Saturday, permanent Security Council members of France and U.K joined Germany, Spain, and other European nations in what looked like a coordinated demand that elections be called in Venezuela, Venezuela within eight days. Well, there already was elections, and Maduro won, right? That's for the people to decide, not for the, the, the uh, international community. This is the UN, right? They got to get rid of this. Fucking bullshit. Russia, a UN Security Council member, has said foreign support for Guaido violates international law, the opposition. This is, this is Russia backing the, the, the elected guy and is a direct path to bloodshed. That's Russia calling it. China, Mexico, and Turkey have also publicly backed Maduro. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accused Russia and China of propping up a failed regime and said it was time to support the Venezuelan people immediately. 
No more delays, no more games. Either you stand with the forces of freedom or you're in a league with Maduro and his mayhem. Oh, let's listen to Pompeo himself. The humanitarian situation demands action now. It demands action today. Pompeo. Today, 9 out of 10 citizens live in poverty. Millions lack access to drinking water and food. Three out of four hospitals have been abandoned. Three million Venezuelans have been forced to flee their homeland, thereby flooding the region and threatening international peace and security. The time is now to support the Venezuelan people, to recognize the new democratic government led by interim president Guaido, and end this nightmare. Now it's time for every other nation to pick a side. No more delays, no more games. Either you stand with the forces of freedom, or you're in league with Maduro and his mayhem. Some countries have publicly taken former President Maduro's side. China, Russia, Syria, and Iran are just four of them. It's not a surprise that those who rule without democracy in their own countries are trying to prop up Maduro while he is in dire straits. China and Russia are propping up a failed regime in the hopes of recovering billions of dollars in ill-considered investments and assistance made over the years. This money was never intended to help the Venezuelan people. It lined the pockets of the Maduro regime, its cronies, and its benefactors. And I want to be 100% clear. President Trump and I fully expect that our diplomats will continue to receive protections provided under the Vienna Convention. Do not test the United States on our resolve to protect our own people. We hope, we hope that the international community will support the people of Venezuela and the transitional government led by Juan Guaido. So there, were, there you go. There was even a physical, a physical act of violence, a threat of violence, that if you touch our, our, our people on the ground in Venezuela, after they were told to leave, we'll take action. We will protect our citizens when they're trespassing on, on someone in someone else's uh, backyard. Uh, so that's Pompeo, Mr. Flex, flexing his muscles. He vilified Iran, took a, an opportunity to vilify, vilify Syria, China, Russia, right? We have fake elections, and they're accusing China has no elections, but we buy all their, we buy all their all their stuff, right? They're our favorite trading partner, but they they don't have elections, but they're okay, right? And 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 they have slave labor, but we don't you don't see us running over there, destabilizing their country. Right? Russia's UN ambassador accused Washington of plotting a coup against Maduro. Well, you just heard Pompeo in his own words. He said the council was not established to support regime change and call for further dialogue. Well, so that's Russia saying, why are we here at the U.N. You know, Security Council meeting when this is not about regime? We're not here to, to determine regime change. We're here. To, that's not the, the point of the U.N. That's why you got to dissolve it at this point. China's representative said that while his country was committed to the purposes and principles of the council, the situation in Venezuela does not constitute a threat to national security, and China does not interfere in other countries' internal affairs. The communists are saying that. Washington says Venezuela represents a threat to peace and security in the region. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, not at all. Uh, where? What? They don't even have, they have nothing. They got no military, they got nobody. They're a threat to the region? No. Moscow says it is Washington which represents the threat, risking a descent into uncontrolled violence. Yeah, I would agree with Moscow that there is a threat to uncontrolled violence. Maduro was re-elected to a second term last year, but the elections were controversial. Okay with many opposition candidates barred from running or jailed. That's not really true. It was they boycotted the thing. Right? Well, that's again, that's an internal problem. We have two and a half, three million people in jail. That's an internal problem. That's their problem. It's not our problem. The National Assembly argued that the president's, the presidential position is actually vacant. This is the opposition guy making an argument. It's actually vacant because the election was unfair and that under the Constitution, this means that Mr. Guardo, as head of the National Assembly, should take over as acting president instead. Maduro has so far retained the support of the country's military, but Guardo has asked them to put themselves on the side of the Venezuelan people and back him instead. 
Uh, so the big the story here is not for us, for for us, the Americans and the Europeans watching this, and and the you know the the South Americans that are watching this. It's not about so much Venezuela, but we're watching a coup. We're watching a hostile takeover of a small nation to basically put our corporations in there. It's just, that's, what, that's what this is, right? And the justification for all of this is free and fair elections, right? When technically they've had that. Now, in the United States, again, right? How is it that we could say, with a straight face, say that Venezuela is, is not allowed to exist because there is a suspicion in that country that the elections weren't up to our standards. Now, Jimmy Carter and his foundation monitored elections in Venezuela at some point and declared them to be fair and free and pretty pretty much open when Hugo Chavez was there, right? But but now but you can't even get you can't get the United States to do that. We vote on on rigged machines, machines that are antiquated, that can be controlled remotely, that are privately owned by companies with a with with conflicting interests in seeing who wins and who doesn't win. Right? We we have fake elections, right? And and that's the justification for invading a foreign country. It's just not right. So bloodshed coming, bloodshed on the horizon. Yeah, damn right. It, that's what it looks like. Marcus Conti reporting.